Hello and welcome to this tutorial on atmospheric perspective effects in Renderman Studio 4.0 and Autodesk Maya 2013. So hopefully most of you will actually understand what atmospheric perspective is. For those of you who don't understand it, what it basically is, is the effect of molecules and um, particles in the atmosphere scattering light over distance so that the thicker the atmosphere the more atmosphere there is between you and an object the more light becomes scattered which is quite obvious in this scene here where in the great distance trees which are probably the same color as this or bushes like this become washed out desaturated and move towards a bluer spectrum because of water molecules in the atmosphere so it's an important effect in computer graphics to actually add to the feeling of depth within a scene. There's various ways which we can add depth using light, using atmospheric perspective, parallax, um, a bunch of other things. But atmospheric perspective is particularly useful for far distant objects to actually say what's in front of what. So yes, Renderman Studio actually does have a tutorial on this already, and I'll show you how to actually get to it. But I'm actually going to be doing something slightly different from the standard Renderman tutorial. I'm going to be using um, some physically plausible shading mixed in with some basic Maya shading, um, our original Renderman Maya shading. Okay. To find the file which I'm using in this tutorial, I would like you please to go to Renderman University, which you can find under Resources. Renderman University in the Pixar site and do a search for atmosphere. And hey presto, the first thing which will come up is this particular tutorial, which is fog and atmospheric effects. Now, I won't be working along exactly with this, I'll be showing you a slightly different workflow which I find more interesting and um, produces results which I think are better and we get to use some tools which you may not have played with yet. So at the very bottom of this web page here we actually have the project files which I would like you to download if you want to work along with me. Okay, And I'll be basically doing something which is very similar to this scene here with these kind of jumping jack figures um, and atmospheric perspective into the background. Okay, So they become less saturated as they go deeper. So I've actually downloaded that file and unzipped it and opened it up. So this is the scene file. Now hopefully you can all do this. So the scene file as it exists at the moment has a floor plane, always fond of floor planes, a group of these jumping jacks, or cogs as they're calling them here, and two lights, two standard Maya lights. Now we know that standard Maya lights and standard Maya materials, because these cogs here actually have standard Maya materials on them, this is a blim material. They still work within Renderman. But I'm going to actually update this slightly to physically plausible lighting and physically plausible shading with a few little bits and pieces of the old school Renderman blended in amongst. So we actually get best of both worlds. Okay. Um, starting off, for the ground plane, I'm just going to give it a matte material. And I'm going to go to my, there's a camera set up here already, in the panels section here, panels, and go to render camera. And I'm just going to do a quick render. Let's do a quick render using Renderman. It brings up it, and I'm going to leave this always on top, so it's right click, go to always on top in the image tool menu. So you can see we are actually rendering the scene, even though it's Maya lights and mostly my materials apart from this ground plane here. Um, so we're actually getting a result, but we have no atmospheric perspective within the scene as it currently stands. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go into Slim and put together some shaders which will allow us to have a mixture of physically plausible shading on the actual surface with atmospheric perspective going into the background. Before I do that, I'm just going to put in a little kind of dummy object here just for giggles. Let me just go to my 
quad view here and let me just put in a little dummy object here okay let's see we've got two of them there we probably do no we have just one okay i'm going to work on this for a couple of minutes possibly as well just as something which will give me um, a bit of a hook into the random man system okay so let's go into random man the launch slim through this button here and we get slim window opens up for us. There's already a, a palette here. Now remember, we need to create a palette. If there is one there, fine. If not, go file, new palette. So I've got a palette. And within this palette, I'm going to make a material. So to do this, I'm right clicking in the graph layout here. And I'm going to go materials, GP surface. OK, so that's my GP surface. I'm going to give it a color which is going to be in this case I'll make a make this one blue just for an obvious reason other than I like blue and I'm going to make a material ensemble this is a group of attributes which go into surfaces if I middle mouse drag GP surface to the material ensemble we can see that it hooks up the material and GP surface slots for this. So we have materials and rib boxes and tickle boxes and volume shaders. Now volume shaders is what I'm interested in here. Okay. So what I can do is left clicking on the little icon here, widget, and go to connect. And up here I've got a choice of volume shaders between fog and smoke. What I want is fog. So I've got my material ensemble with material, surface, and some fog joined into it. I've got my object selected there, and I'm going to attach it so it's actually in my scene. Hopefully you're following along with this. It's quite straightforward so far. So let me just move this into a location where it's going to be seen by the camera. And move it up. Let's see if I can move it up. Okay. No, I don't want that. I want this. Let's move it up. So it's going to be quite obvious. And go to my panels, render camera. Okay. Very large pyramid in my um, in my scene here. Let's go to it. Make sure we've got always on top. And let's do a render. It's glowing. That glow is actually the fog. Now, that fog is being lit by these two spotlights. Okay, let's have a look at our scene again. These spotlights are what is making the fog glow so much. For the moment, I'm going to get rid of this spotlight. Okay, because this spotlight is casting shadows and doing stuff which is kind of cool, but I don't really want it at the moment. I'm going to replace it later in the tutorial with a physically plausible um, area light. But we also have a second spotlight, which is here. Okay. This is the spotlight which is doing most of the lighting for the scene. So if I go back to here and I re-render, we'll just see we get almost an equivalent quantity of light, but we're not getting much on the, the ground plane. And we're still getting the glow here. If I just move this up slightly, I'll probably get a bit more on the ground plane as well. This isn't sticking with the always on top. Let's just go re-render. Okay, we're getting a bit of lighting there. Um, this glow here is kind of disconcerting for me. So how can I fix this? Well, there's a few ways. If I was to change my lighting value down to 0. 0.00001 per memory, and I re-render, it's now not glowing quite so much, but there's very little light in the scene. Okay, if I was to change it to a little bit brighter than that, re-render. And a little bit less bright. So 
so we can see it is actually rendering but let's just set it to point zero one for the moment and re-render so we're actually seeing some of these objects in the foreground now that's one way that I can control the lighting of the fog the second way which I can control the lighting of the fog is actually within slim let's call up slim again okay so here's slim here's my fog shift this out of the way it's always getting in the way so my fog density here I have at point one let's change this to point zero one and re-render point zero zero one and re-render you can see the fog is actually reducing point zero 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 one and re-render okay now nothing else in this scene at the moment is being affected by the fog nothing else whatsoever because the fog is not actually looking at it let's just quickly have a look here for a moment I'm going to actually change my surface color because the surface color is kind of a little bit dull so it may not be giving you the best example of how this is attenuating the color Okay, let me just make sure that this is still attached. Yes. Okay, and let's just check our fog and let's turn the value down to extremely low. We should be getting some. Of course, not getting an awful, an awful lot of light in the scene. Okay. Not a lot of light, but it's actually there. Re render. What I want to do now is I'm going to attach a slim material to these jumping jacks. Okay. To do that, I'm just going to make another, just a material in this case, not an ensemble, just a material. So I'm just going to go uh, GP surface and I'm going to make it that kind of reddish pinkish color that it was existing. So let's just go for that. Let's increase the saturation here slightly. It's kind of pinkish hue and saturation. There we go. Okay, and we'll re-render this. Now we don't have a material on that yet. So let's apply this material. Let's go to our group and apply this material. Attach as surface and re-render. They're turning out entirely black. Why are they turning out entirely black, you may ask. I ask myself this question. The reason is the standard Maya lights are not illuminating GP surfaces. Let's get over this problem. Let's put in a Renderman physically plausible area light. Okay, so I've just dropped from the scene. It's tiny in the middle here. Let's scale it up. Scale it up. And let's move it. And let's rotate it. Hopefully in the right direction. The screen space here is at a premium because I'm trying to um, do it all in one screen. Let's go again and move it slightly out here. Okay. Let's just trigger a re-render here. So re-render. And we can see, hey presto, we actually have nice physically plausible shading on these. And we have atmospheric perspective in the background here on our GP surface here. Let me change this to something else. Change it to the purple, re-render. So we'll see that has atmospheric perspective in it. Huzzah! But nothing else has. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to actually get atmospheric perspective working on everything. Now this is a really nice little cheat, a really nice tip. If I select my fog and in the namespace here I change it to world. Okay, and I go to re-render. 
look what happens. Renderman actually knows that anything that's called world affects everything in the world. So I'm getting atmospheric perspective on everything here. I'm getting light, which is affecting the objects from this. And this little tiny blip down here, you can see it here, is the Maya light, which is actually giving me the atmospheric lighting. OK, so I've separated those out. Now you'll see at the edges here, we're actually losing some of the lighting on these objects here. The reason for that is because this, whoops, that was me zooming in. Um, this light, let me go back to this light again, spotlight, and zoom in towards it. The cone of that light is not actually filling up the whole scene. So I can go into the light shape and I can change the cone angle to say 50 degrees and you'll see these um, cogs over here will now render with atmospheric lighting on them because previously they weren't being considered. It wasn't actually hitting them. This light is being used for the fog and this big renderman light here is being used for the physically plausible shading with the nice soft shadows. Okay, let's now take this object here out of the way just put it over there we can we can probably delete it at this point but I mean let's see how we're looking here this scene's not looking too bad so far one thing which I would like to change with it is I would like to actually put something in the background so in my case here I'm going to go to view select camera which will open up the attribute editor hopefully Let's go to Panels, Render Camera. Maya's being, yeah, there we go. Maya's being a bit sluggish. Uh, select Camera, and I'm going to go down to the Environment Variables here for the camera, and Background Color, set it to something grayish with a bit more blue, something like that, and re-render this. And we're getting pretty decent results now. So I found this to be much, much easier than the way which is actually outlined in the um, in the tutorial. One thing which you might want to do is you might want to actually set up the entire shader so it actually affects all of these objects. But I find this pretty sweet. Hopefully you found it useful. And I hope that person outside beeping their horn stops quite soon. So thanks again for your time and consideration, and I'll be back to you shortly with some more tutorials. Thanks again.